Hello, everybody. Today is a very special Monday mystery. It's not how I've been doing it. I we're actually filming this on Friday and yesterday or this morning, we released a reading about Solomon with uh, Stephanie and Judy. And so I immediately was struck that I'm going to have to do the Monday mystery just right away with Stephanie because holy shit, do we have a lot to get through. So first of all, Stephanie, how are you doing this morning? I'm hanging in there. It's been a, it's been a morning. Both of us have been attacked this morning, but we're laughing at it because it literally feels like a temper tantrum coming from the other side. It does not feel strategic at this moment. So we're just kind of LOL right now. So um, that we're nowhere over the target. Oh, we're totally over the target. And so that's, again, why I brought Stephanie in this morning, because I think with this sixth and seventh book of Moses, the spell books of Moses, I followed the rabbit hole and I went real deep. And now I'm like, I text Stephanie or I told you, I was like, holy shit, this is bigger than the Necronomicon. This is where this starts. This is, and I think that we're going to try to untangle some cobwebs that have, what is the Shakespeare line? Oh, the tangled webs we weave when first we practice to deceive. So we're going to start um, untangling that deception. But I was specifically told by Magdalene, to do a cleansing ceremony on camera so that those of you watching right now, if you would like to have your monitor um, cleansed at this point, please accept it. If you don't consent to it, that's fine too. Just watch while we do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to light my sage. I have a sage candle here lit as well. And so I'm going to ask that Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel and all of their angels come in and protect both Stephanie and myself and all of our viewers right now who would like to be protected. Okay. I ask that they protect the equipment. Um, I ask that any beings that are negative negative beings who are not here for our highest good, who are trying to infiltrate into the Zoom, uh, be, be banished back to uh source god source creator you're not welcome here in this space i'm also going to call on mary magdalene and yashua i know magdalene you're always around me anyway but as what happened yesterday if there is something that you would like to say um, i'm going to ask that magdalene tap me on the shoulder uh, and yashua tap stephanie on the shoulder if there's something that they would like to say in regards to the subject that we're going to talk i'm actually going to use um some dragon's blood here i just did that <laughs> We're Bryce and I have been extremely telepathic in the last 24 hours. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, it absolutely. I was on Dark Outpost yesterday with Judy, and holy crap, were the audience going nuts um, because we're we're putting the truth out there. So um, Bryce was watching, and she was telepathically telling me what to say, except I didn't realize it until afterward. <laughs> We don't even need a text anymore. We can just do, do, do. <laughs> yeah. Well, our text, our texting was getting um, messed up with yesterday. I was not able to do um, a tarot session on my computer. I had to do it on my phone this morning. I woke up sicker than a dog about to throw up. You know what though? I'm going to wear it as a badge of honor. I'm over yeah. target. That's all I need to know. These don't, this, these attacks don't even scare me. I have my black tourmaline and I have all my crystals here. And we have God on our side, the real yeah. God on our side. Yeah. We so we're going to get through this. Here. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, guys, if there is, if you do hear any voice crackling or anything in this video, it is them probably trying to get into our Zoom. I have asked that Mike will be here to um, kick them out. They're not on the guest list, kick them out. And again, once again, I'm just asking for all of our guides for Stephanie and my guides and anybody who's watching who can sense all of our guides that are here for our highest good to be here right now. Any type of spiritual being person who's astro traveling that is not here for our highest good, that is here to cause havoc and chaos. I am asking that you leave. I'm actually demanding that you leave. You are not welcome. And we know that this is a world of consent. And I do not consent to you in my space or in my Zoom. And um, for those watching, if you don't consent, just say that to your computer screen right now, that you don't consent for them being here within your space either. Um, we I don't are consent with them being in my space. So they are banished in this here in a moment. Mm -hmm. So I think I found 
And I think I say this every time the Mac Daddy spell book, but God just keeps pushing me to go a little bit deeper. And when I stumbled upon this book, I literally text Stephanie and I was like, um, this is worse than Necronomicon, in my opinion. All right. And so I know that this video and this information, once again, is going to trigger a lot of deeply programmed, deeply brainwashed church members. And I'm asking you, if you believe that you are serving the God of love and the God of mercy, do not send us death threats. Because if you do that and you think it's justified by God, you are absolutely serving Lucifer. Your own Bible says they will know, you will know them by their fruits. Okay. And I'm telling you, Hindu people are a lot more peaceful than Christians. The real Yahshua, the real Mary Magdalene, wants the two of us to expose this. Oh, yeah. And, and the real Jesus, the real Yahshua, cannot come back until people stop this nonsense of putting him on a pedestal. Yeah, he told me that in a dream. I had a dream yeah. one night where he sat beside, he actually put something into me, which that's a different story. But since then, my cycle has like actually gotten healthier and my fertility has gotten healthier, which is really strange because I'm pushing 40. But anyway, that's probably TMI. But, um, and then he sat with me and he told me that he can't come back unless we stop this, this <clears throat> satanic worship of another human being. And I'm not afraid of persecution from Christians at this point either. In fact, it actually makes me laugh. So mean words to either one of us, sticks and stones. And it just proves our point. It proves our point that you're not, you're serving Lucifer. Christianity yeah. is Satanism. It doesn't matter if your church is part of one of the big mega churches. It doesn't matter if your church is Bethel. It's the whole freaking system is satanic. Christ when's the last time a Buddhist emailed you a death threat never when's the last time a christian did uh yesterday okay if you can't get the point with that then you need to do some digging into your own self mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it doesn't matter baptist presbyterian methodist lutheran episcopalian catholic yeah. it's all satanism it is satanism 100 percent. your bible is the bible the god of the bible is lucifer if you go back and reread, we did that, Stephanie. We went back, we were on a Zoom together and we pulled out our Bibles and we, my Bible now is just strictly for research. I don't honor it. I'm about to burn mine. When this is over, I'll probably be burning mine too. Um, I don't honor it. I don't, I know it's not the word of God. It's the word of Lucifer. But one night we were trying to decode something and we went and read the whole, like part, most of Revelation together. And we read it from the perspective of Lucifer being God. And it told a totally different story, didn't it? A totally different timeline. And so right now, every person watching, the, the one thing you can rely on is not your head, but your heart and your gut. Because that is what's connect, that's your umbilical cord to your true creator. If the Bible was so loving, so comforting, why don't more people read it? Exactly. exactly. And I, I, I was convinced that it was the word of God a year ago. I was. I was trapped in the same programming. But at the same time, it never, never felt right. Even the wording, like the way other Christians talk to other Christians or Christians talk to non-Christians, there is a programmed vocabulary. It's condescending, too. Very. That is not the God that created us. Mm -mm. That is that is not. That is Lucifer. And you really have to, it's going to trigger people. But we're actually kind of purposely triggering people because we know people need to work on themselves. If it, the part of this ascension, part of this ascension is working on yourself, getting rid of the programming, right, Bryce? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You got to cut that bondage and, and we need to, and this is what I want to explain again, what cognitive dissonance is, because there, there is somebody in there that's been really pissed off by these messages, but there, you keep coming back to here. Obviously there's something that's settling in you. That's some truth. Yep. If, if, if you believed what you believed, you wouldn't be reacting in anger. Right. So the reason why you're projecting anger is because you know, there's some truth to this deep, deep down to what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, 
I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, I'm sure it'll come to me. But <laughs> just know, guys, yes. Oh, cognitive dissonance. So basically, the basic definition of cognitive dissonance is that you're seeing the truth, but believing the lie. That's what cognitive dissonance is. And we sit on this side of this battle. We've been laughing at our friends and family who fell for the flu because of their cognitive dissonance. Well, if you still believe the church is good, you're, in you're no different than they are. Because you're in cognitive dissonance as well. The church is bad. One, it's the top. It's, it's, it's the tippity top. top. It's, it's the, the puppet head. master. It's the puppet master of all these other institutions. Okay. It does not mean that your pastor is bad. As Judy was saying over and over again, you're saying, I totally agree with her. There are really good people in the church and they think they're doing the right thing because they've been programmed and they're trying to do the right thing. But the system itself is satanic. 100%. The Communion and Bible, itself is, that's a blood ritual. Do what? Communion is a blood ritual. The whole story of Jesus. That's, Mithra. A human, that's human sacrifice, guys. Mithra. It's not Jesus, Mithra. The source God, the creator God, would never ask for that. That's a blood yeah. ritual. And we participate in it, and we've believed it, and we've worshipped it. The God who created me stopped, told me to stop doing it. Yeah. Stop going Wake to church. Up, stop taking this. Yeah. Yahshua ben Joseph, the real person that we think is jesus was never fucking crucified he wasn't crucified he didn't have to be because <clears throat> source creator doesn't require blood all right so let's get into it so if we if we you know there's a saying there's a the saying this the fish stinks from the head down so we got to go back back to the beginning okay and as i said yesterday um i think on my show uh yeah our, our Sorry, you guys will be a few days ago because this will be aired on Monday. Um, the Old Testament literally is a family tree. You're literally following. What is that you're following? A bloodline. You're following a bloodline. All right. So let's I'm just going to go over some things for a minute just so we kind of understand what's happening here. So the books that we're looking at today are the sixth and seventh book of Moses. Now, most of us who grew up in a Christian home or in a Jewish home or in an Islamic home, a Muslim home, we know that the first five books of the Bible were written by who? Moses. All right. It's also called the Torah. Okay. So we know that Moses, we know the story, uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, we got to go. Oh, let my people go. You remember that, that song, let my people go. So let's, let's think about what we know about Moses. So Moses is also famous for the Exodus story, where he removed the people, his people, the Israelites from Egypt, from the Pharaohs. Okay. We've been taught, even in this great awakening, we've been talking about the Red Sea moment. We're looking for a Red Sea moment. We have to stop saying that. We have to stop saying that. And I'll tell you why that was black magic, guys. The story we've been told from my opinion, which we're going to ask the cards, but the story we've been told about Moses is inverted. It's inverted. Okay. So the story we were told is that, Mo you know, so let's go, let's back up a little bit before Moses. What happened? We had Abraham, which we know he was a fucking satanic man who had Isaiah, who had Jacob. For those who are not familiar with Jacob, Jacob became Israel. That was his name, Israel. And he had his 12 sons who we were told we were told the 12 sons were the 12 tribes of Israel. We now know that the 12 tribes of Israel are galactic. All right. So Joseph, who was Jacob's son, was sold into slavery, human slavery by his brothers. He ended up in Egypt. He ended up becoming very powerful in Egypt. He had a ring, a ring. We talked about the ring yesterday. He had a ring of royal authority. So all these dudes have this fucking ring. And if you missed that video, I'm going to put it down in the description box below. They had a fucking ring. Okay. All right. So then after, after old Joe passed away, um, the story goes that the Egyptian people got very, very um, intimidated by the growing Jewish population. And so there's a story that they ordered all of the male sons, the male infants be drowned or, or killed. Yeah. All right, we're skipping over some stuff, guys. It's just the Cliff Notes version. This is where we get like Passover. It's where we get a bunch of stuff, right? From with with different 
religions and stuff. So uh, the story goes that Moses, who was Jacob or Israel's great, great grandson, was hidden in like a stream in some bushes. And the Pharaoh's daughter went and collected Moses and raised him in the palace with the Pharaoh. So he was raised with the Pharaohs. Then he figures out that he's actually not Egyptian. He comes from the slave class of people and he goes off into the desert. What was it, like 60 years or something? He's just wandering the desert. And he comes back. I can't remember the exact years, guys. Doesn't it really was matter. 40. Maybe something. it was 40. I can't remember. It was a long time. He was like walking around the desert, right? So then he comes back to, you know, the Pharaoh's palace and he's like, let my people go, you know, and Pharaoh says no. Well, then what does he do? God, apparently God, God puts plagues upon them. There are like 10 different plagues that happens before, before Pharaoh actually lets the people go. And that's where the Passover comes from because then the oldest son and ended up killing the sons of the Pharaohs, but then the Jewish people were left to put the blood, the blood, it was lamb's blood right on the door, the blood, wake up the blood. So a sacrifice had to be made. To get that blood, wake up, wake up. All right. They're telling you, the Bible's telling you who their God is. And then all of a sudden they're like, Pharaoh's like, okay, you can go. And so they're walking along and they get to the Red Sea and all of a sudden Pharaoh changes his mind and his group of gallant Egyptian warriors come racing down and Moses parts the Red Sea and the Israelites walk through. But as soon as the Egyptians get there, the sea closes and kills them all. Then all of a sudden they're up over, they've crossed the sea. They're in that Middle Eastern area. And so then Moses decides to go up on Mount Sinai, this uh, you know mountain trip where he gets the Ten Commandments. And he comes back down there, worshiping the calf. All this stuff happens. The Ten Commandments become the Ark of the Covenant. Well, first of all, let's back up a little bit. So the first thing I want to show you guys before we even ask the cards anything I'm going to show you guys what the original paintings and sculptures of Moses looked like. What do you see on his head? I'm just grabbing my cardigan real quick. Okay. So guys, um, are you cold? <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> what do y'all see on Moses's head? Horns. These are horns. What the hell? So this what is how the... Moses, Moses was originally depicted as with horns. Wow. That's messed up. So let me let's ask the cards, Stephanie. Okay. We were taught that the Egyptians were the bad guys. Yep. Were the Egyptians the bad guys? All right. Oh, and while Stephanie is pulling, guys, because usually I cut this out while she's pulling, so you're not listening to, to, air, to, to dead air, but I'm going to show you guys this uh, sigil ring of Lucifer, because we're going to get into, when we get into the, the sixth and seventh book of Moses, sig sig sigils, I can't, sigils, I can't really say that word properly, but you see these rings, and we know that Solomon had his ring, and we know that Joseph also had a ring. So just so you guys know, Pay attention to, to jewelry that people wear, especially certain truthers. Pay attention to what they're wearing. Um, so I have a judgment card, which is telling me that judgment has been put on the Egyptians, meaning like, A narrative was spun. Could be. Um, but I'm getting the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is like happiness, family, integrity. Um, I don't like to word, use the word harmony only because the word harm is in harmony. That was a duped word. Um, <clears throat> and it looks like whatever story they had was scrambled because that's like... Um, a card of um like fighting so because of that and the judgment card it it could definitely be that the um egyptians story was manipulated 
Um, if you want me to dig deeper into it, I can ask if the Israelites were the bad guys. Yeah, and while you're doing that, let me tell you guys a little bit more while she's pulling cards. So, all right. I'm trying to think where I want to go because there's some other questions I have to There was oh, look at sorry. that picture. Look the at dragon. that picture. The dragon. The red dragon. Oh, uh, wait a second. I thought I had a different card than I had. All right, you can go on while I'm pulling. All right. So there was, if we look through a uh, history, and I'm going to wait to go deeper into this because this is something I want to talk about when we get deeper into the Egyptians as well. Um, there was a time historically, and of course we don't know if our history is correct or not, but from what we know now, there was a time when there was a big exodus of a, na a nation. <clears throat> from Egypt, and it is said that they were asked that the Pharaoh asked them to leave. Hmm. The Pharaoh himself asked them to leave. So did you get your cards? I asked specifically if the Israelites were the bad guys, and I got an ace. Um, I also got, they were asked, as you were saying, asked to leave. This is a travel card. They didn't, they didn't escape. They were asked to leave by the Pharaoh, according to the history, the documents from Egypt. And this was telling me that the Israelites were dominating with that world card. That could be like a domination according to the particular question. Um, so, and I want to say this again, we're not speaking about Jewish people. No. Every single person's religion has been manipulated. All <laughs> of them are bad. All right. We're just trying to get to the bottom because the Egyptian nation Regardless of whether it's in Egypt, we think it is now, or Egypt here in America, the Egyptian nation was a hodgepodge of all sorts of people. We spoke about this yesterday. There were white people. There were Nordic-looking people. There were black people. There were even blue people, right? So it, it was the remains of Atlantis, and they had the true, the true spiritual faith. So we know that the Israelites, according to the Bible, the Israelites called their god El, well, we have been told that the Israelites worshipped a singular God. But El stands for the Elohim, which is multiple. And there's some good Elohim and there's some bad Elohim. Now, in the Grand Grimoire, we learned that the Elohim, like Jehovah, were um, middleman between Lucifer and humans. We, this is also where we get the word elder from our church to elevate. We also know that the Hebrew alphabet eventually became Latin. What do we know about Latin? Demonic. Okay. All right. We also know that the Egyptians mined for turquoise as an orb went by me. We know that turquoise has been used and manipulated by, if you want to know who some bad truthers are, just look at who wears turquoise all the time. They're all wearing turquoise. By the way, this is not turquoise. <laughs> I just want to make that clear. This is not yeah, turquoise. There's some people that are going to like occasionally have turquoise on that aren't bad. You can tell them yeah. we're using it to harness energy. So the Egyptians obviously knew that there was something valuable in turquoise. And this was something that got manipulated. Okay. So now there is a, 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 um, a tablet that was found in 1947 called the Osmosis Tablet. And Osmosis, I know I'm not saying that right. So who was Osmosis? Osmosis means the brother of Moses. So he was the Pharaoh when this was happening. And apparently the Osmosis tablet tells the story of what the bible the, the story the bible tells but it, it there's some differences okay so um they it record it records that there were catastrophes that happened in egypt 
Um, and it, and we were taught, we were taught and we're still taught that the Egyptians worshiped multiple gods, but according to the Achmoses, the Egyptians worshiped one God. Doesn't shock me. And the Elohim, the El, who the Israelites worshiped is multiple gods. So let's ask the cards. Let's just ask about the Egyptians. Did they worship one God? Well, can the cards let us know that? Frankly, the, the ancient Egyptians. Now, the interesting thing is, once this uh, tablet was found in 1947, it was eventually, or very quickly, hidden away in the Cairo basement. So we can't see it. Two aces? Yeah. No, that's an ace, and that's the world card. So they switched it with that world card, because that's a change. And yes, they worshipped one god. Everything I already inverted. knew that. Everything huh? is inverted. Everything, yeah. guys. Okay, now let's talk about uh, what what old Moses was up to. So let me tell you guys this. The word Moses translates to the word Moshi, which translates to the word Magus, which translates to Master Magician. Oh, wow. Okay, so I want to ask, is Moses' story of being found in the bushes, collected by Pharaoh's daughter, and raised in the courts correct? Or, this is why I'm asking, we'll just see what, what, how you can ask the cards, or did he come into the Pharaoh's court as an infiltrator, as an adult? Because you guys, according to history, the slave class was not all Israelite. There were a lot of Israelite Hebrews that were not slaves. There were some Nordic people who were slaves. There were black people who were slaves. There were blue people who were slaves. So even that story is, has been jacked. And that's just according to history. That's just according to what the scholars have on record. So I'm specifically asking if Moses infiltrated the Egyptians as an adult. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I'm asking that, guys, um, after she pulls the cards. Yep. So not only was it him, though, he had a whole coven. He had a whole coven who infiltrated. Gosh, I got, I want to throw up. Like, that just got, like, hit me. Yeah. Yes. And then, it, and then it was, again, I get the world card. It was then twisted. And um, the words that we see are not what they, it's manipulated, manipulated words. So Moses, here are the Egyptians who are worshiping the one God, according to Ach Moses tablets, they're worshiping one God. They're trying to live their lives in the right way. They're like, Oh, Hey, yes, come into our court. You know, they have all sorts of people of all nationalities, all skin colors living in Egypt. We're just, they're just the freaking leftovers from Atlantis. Okay. So this is why I ask this. So the Egyptians understood magic. Magic itself is not bad. The conception of a baby is magic when the egg hits the sperm. They understood all of this and they kept the information very locked and key. We're looking at the fall of Atlantis that had just happened, maybe. Yes, because this is after Noah, that had just happened. And so they were trying to like not have that happen again where the bad people got a hold of this information. So you guys, as I've said so many times, and I'm gonna probably say on every show, darkness cannot create anything. It can only just take from the light. And so there is a theory that because Moses got the name Moses or master magician, that he ended up getting hold of a lot of the secrets of spell work that the Egyptians had held under lock and key. So Atlantis, the fall of Atlantis wouldn't happen again. Is that true? Did Moses get his hands on information about how to do spell work? As an orb just went by me. So, <clears throat> I'm getting weird downloads. That's kind of coming off of the cards in a way. Um, so we, I get the king and queen of pentacles. 
here. Pentacles are a physical matter, earthly matter, right? So he did get his hands on something. Um, King of Pentacles is power. So he had power to... I'm not getting necessarily he stole something that... It's almost like he already knew. Okay. Okay. But at the same time... He knew how to manipulate. So he was a narcissistic psychopath. And he knew how to hypnotize. He knew how to manipulate and hypnotize to put something on a different timeline from what was good. So the Empress card is like the, the Egyptians, right? I mean, even look at the picture. She, she has an Ankh right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Ankh is actually the real cross. So... Did he have, so in my research, I found that he had inherited spell books from Abraham. So Which he means was, he already knew what to do because if he inherited the books, it's not like he took the books from the Egyptians. He already had it in his possession is what I'm getting. He did take though. And before we get though, I'm going to ask you. So my dog is sitting on my bed right now. My desk is facing my bed and he is literally watching something or someone pace back and forth at the end of the bed. He's literally watching it. Can you just pull quickly and see who that is? Cause he, he only barked a little bit and now he's kind of like, he doesn't look too concerned, but there is something, there is somebody or something marching back and forth at the edge of my bed. Definitely somebody who is underneath the surface, like they either astro traveling or a spirit um, that is under burden and hardship and needs to surrender. So somebody who feels backed up against a wall, who, to you. who who thinks she she's got power, but has to surrender that power. So it's a negative. It's a negative because if they have to surrender, why would a good person have to surrender? And <clears throat> and we were told that she is going away this weekend to do ceremonies, rituals. I mean, I want to explain why I'm getting a female. I'm getting a female. Number one, I get the queen of pentacles, but the moon card is feminine energy. So that's why I'm picking a female. And it's somebody underneath the surface, somebody you can't see because I have the moon card. So she's asked for traveling. It's either an astro traveler or it's a spirit of some kind. But I'm getting it's a negative spirit because they have to surrender. There's some kind of burden they're under and they have to surrender. <laughs> I mean, I could pull a couple more cards. Yeah, I pull. I'm going to go just sage the other half of the room. I'll be right back. Wait, Clarify some cards. This. Go. Clarify this energy that's in Bryce's room. Whoever is in here is not Ooh, the guy I said. Robbie said, good, you have to leave. I banish you. You have to leave my space. You cannot be here. This is actually quite pathetic. <laughs> it is pathetic. Quite pathetic. Um, it is somebody, Bryce. It's somebody that's definitely trying to ask her travel. Because this is travel. This is trying to do something because they're running away from they're running away from the penalty they're going to have to face. Well, when you do blood rituals and you put pictures up on your social media account from 2012, which people find because you were dumb enough to not take them down. Guess what? You and don't think the white dumb. hats don't have that? You don't think the White Hats are watching? You don't think they don't know? Of course they know. Even I've filled out yeah. affidavits. <laughs> even I've, I've even filled out affidavits. Like, girl, come on. You're not that stupid. Um, I, I think, so I think, oh, geez, God. Yeah, it's the coven, coven card. It's the coven card. Okay, yeah. so... I, I want to just remind these people. Um, 
we have gifts too. We know we're learning our gifts. And so I hear things I do too. from yeah. Spirit Realm. And I know Bryce does very, very well, probably more strong than I do. Um, we know who, we know where, we know how. Like, I, it, it's, you, my, my board has been manipulated. I know it's been my, my dousing board. Um, my cards don't feel manipulated. I have four different decks that I've staged off here just in case I, I'm, I'm switching out between them because I don't, you know, I don't want them to get manipulated while I'm reading. <coughs> I will feel if they are. Um, and, uh, I don't need my dousing board or my cards. Yeah. I, I don't, I really don't need them much anymore. I don't, I, I use my cards in readings. I use my cards for, for entertainment purposes for these shows and everything. A lot of times what I'm getting though, I'm actually hearing from the spirit realm. I have my grandparents around me. I have God, the real God around me, Yahshua around me, the real Yahshua. I have a whole army full of souls that are yeah. for my highest good around me. And they all talk and communicate with me. One of my biggest spirit guys is Archangel Gabriel, who is the angel of communication. And so I don't need my divination tools much because I'm stepping into power, because I'm stepping into my abilities and I'm very confident now in my abilities. I'm not cocky about it. Same thing with you, Bryce. It's um, after a while, when you really hone into these abilities, you don't need the divination tools anymore. Well, here's the thing. I have had abilities my whole life. I've seen spirits. I've had Mary Magdalene talking to me since I was 16. When I was filming with this person, <coughs> infiltrator, she had no idea because I didn't talk about it. I just left it. And I was just like, oh, okay, okay. She didn't know that I knew about tarot cards. 144, by the way. 144,000, sorry. <laughs> and now, ever since all this has happened, um, I've been more open about the fact that I see you. I fucking see you. And I, and I, yeah, Stephanie's right. Like, don't think that we don't have, don't underestimate somebody else. If God's talking to you, he's also talking to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I would just play dumb sometimes because I knew stuff she was saying maybe wasn't accurate, but I was like, oh, what, you know, whatever. Um, Anyway, but I think I know why she's here. I think I know why she's desperate. I think I know why I got attacked this morning. I got thrown. <laughs> I laughed because it was, a, even though it kind of hurt, it was like a temper. It was like a four-year-old throwing a temper tantrum. Um, they gra oh, somebody grabbed my arm in the middle of the night, like really grabbed. They're, I had they're a blood panicked. blister right here. Yeah. They're panicked. And I think yeah. I know why, because of what we're going to be getting to in these notes, but you got to leave. So the reason why I asked about stealing Stephanie to get back to this is I went out now I want to talk about the Egyptian book of the dead. <coughs> oh, fun for all the Christians out there watching. <clears throat> I'm not even going to bring the Jewish people or the Muslim people into it. Cause they're, they're not as cocky as the Christians um, who think that Moses had some incredible experience on a mountain and uh, found the 10 commandments. Y'all he stole them. Fact. Don't even need divination tools because fact. I've He's actually known this for a while because I did some digging on that uh, probably about six months ago. Yeah. He got them from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And so the Egyptian Book of the Dead, that's the modern name that we have for it. The original name was Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. Hmm. That was the original name of the Book of the Dead was the book of emerging forth into the light. So this book is a guide to the afterlife. It, they were very concerned about your passage into the afterlife, the Egyptians. They understood karma. They understood reincarnation. They understood that this life we're physically in now is not the end all be all. And the Egyptian book of the dead was at first the paintings on the uh, in the tombs, right? So they could, when they, they died, they could read. Now they say that they have um, about 65 prayers, 150 illustration. And, and now that we have book copies of it and spells, but a lot of people say the spells are actually prayers. All they are, are prayers, which prayers are spells. Though. Prayers are spells. Yeah. Right? So, um, right. So now there is the 10 commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai are in the Egyptian book of the dead. That was written long before Moses left Egypt. They even talk about a hall of judgment where you go before God and you have to talk about 
your karma basically and what you're going to do next. Um, now, 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 let's just verify with the cards. Did Moses get anything from a mountain with God or, or was this plagiarized stolen shit? So I need to ask specifics. So I'm going to ask if he stole the 10 commandments from the book of the dead. All right, did Moses steal the Ten Commandments from the Book of the Dead? He did something to spell cast. He was a warlock. Absolutely, he was. Um, yeah, he, it wasn't just, see, they keep saying his name is, he, I think he was a head of a cousin. Because, yeah. I mean, look at this. I have the Emperor card, and look at, by the way, what's on his head. Horns. Okay. With my coven card, the three of pentacles. So he collaborated with a group of people. And it's like hush hush with that high priestess card. And this whole entire spread is ones, which tells me that okay. was spell casting. So he traveled. I mean, he did trip. I had a download. Chariot. What does a chariot in the story remind you of? The pharaohs. And what happened to the pharaohs? What happened they, to the chariots? Yeah, they were human sacrifices to get the, the Red Sea to split. Okay. We're going to get to so, that. Because yeah. I'm going to get into the book, the, what the 6th and 7th book of Moses say, and then we're going to talk about all that what he did to the why uh, were the egyptians chasing him they weren't were they trying to get back something is what i'm trying to go with that oh maybe so because if they weren't chasing them why they were they at least behind them they might have been driving them out because they asked them to leave his history okay they asked them to leave and we're going to get because i know i think i know why they asked them to leave <clears throat> But was that the sacrifice in order to do the spell casting is where I'm going with this. Let's see. Let me get into this. So hold okay. that on. Let's talk about the sixth and seventh book of Moses. Sorry, the cards went a little bit ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think they're, I think spirit's excited. And I, and I think that's why Bob is here right now, because I think that they're still using this shit. Okay. Uh -huh. um, Bob. What is, was our song? Bob the Bob the Lizard. Bob the Lizard. Can he spell cast? Bob the Lizard. No, he can't. All right. So a little jingle. All right. So let's just talk a little bit about the sixth and seventh book of Moses, which is also called the Black Bible. It's also called the Black Bible. Okay, guys. What? This is called Black Bible. WTF. Yeah. The sixth and I seventh mean, book of Moses is also called the Black Bible, guys. So I think the whole Bible is the Black Bible, but oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Judgment. It's coming, guys. It's coming. Bring the fucking church down. It's satanic, guys. It's satanic. Okay, so this is possibly the two lost books written by Moses. It started showing up in 18th century German Germany to regular people, but the, the elites have known about it. We're going to get to that. Okay, so it's two secret lost books. It includes some contemporary ess essays. There's a guy that's gone and explained everything, which is really helpful when you're researching, and other writings by people who practice the magic in this book over the years. Okay, it goes all the way back. People have been using these two books since biblical times to now. They're using it, still using it now, according to what I've researched. Okay, contains secret knowledge passed down from Moses, and Moses got information from Abraham all the way to Solomon. And then it went to the priest. We're going to get to that. All right. Oh, it, Lord. It spells, it spells to conjure demons. This is how. He did all this work, which we're going to get to. Okay, let me, let me just keep going. Um, it was written for four specifically Canaanite magicians. All right, all right, all right, all right. So um, Bryce is excited. I mean, this is like, I was, I was like, <laughs> holy shit. And then I got to show you guys the White House because what? All right. And then we're going to get to the Sphinx. All right. So books, uh, so um, book six tells you how to conjure both good and bad spirits and how to use the planets, the planets 
talks about Saturn, Jupiter, how to use the planets. Because again, magic, it's all started for the light, but then they manipulated it for the, for the bad, right? Okay. And it's considered the darkest of all dark magic books, this book. All right. Okay. So it is worse than the Necronomicon. Yes. Um, oh my God. You know who used this book? You know who used this book? You know who used this book? Constantine the Great used this book. Oh, well, go figure. And now the Pope uses the book. The Pope has the oh, book. Oh, even better. All right. It gives the, whoever holds the book has the power to reign over both heaven and hell. So I think this is why the angels are pissed too. Because they've been in bondage too. Listen, we're going to bring that. Let, uh, yeah. We're done. We're, we're done. done. I mean, Okay, so um, let me keep going. Okay, it talks about how to do full moon magic. Where the hell did you dig up this shit? I'm a good researcher. Yeah, no kidding. I don't. Th I'm. A, I, I can't take the credit. I think Magdalene was like pushing me and telling me where to look. Um, talks about how how to have power, how to have control, how to have fame, and how to have wealth. Well, this is why some sounds... families. Whose last name starts with an R have had an unlimited power and have not gotten in trouble until now. Because if you can control both heaven and hell for a certain time period, you're untouchable. You're untouchable. All right. Seventh book picks up where the sex book. This book. pisses me off. It does. It pisses me off too. This it pisses, pisses me off. Book. Uh, yeah, honey, listen, 12 tablets on the spirits of air. And it gets you to say certain spells where you start with the name Jehovah. That's the front door. So let me start with that. Have these churches been using particular names in prayers so that congregations are spell casting? And making packs with Lucifer without even fucking knowing it. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes the cards, you just know they're not lying. Okay. Number one, this is communication by words and thought. Then we have Hierophant, spiritual leader. So that's one. Okay. Now, this is, this could be a spellcaster. Queen of Wands. She's very intuitive. And Wands. Yep. Yep. To stop anybody from getting ahead. So stop using, stop doing these prayers in your churches, guys. Stop it. It's going to be reversed, though. You're it's going to be reversed. Okay, so let's just go ahead and say there are YouTubers out there that have certain catchphrases that they get people to repeat. One in particular, Bob. Is Bob having people hex people with her particular catchphrase? What's, I'm gonna do I know what the yeah, catchphrase is? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Don't repeat and things anybody. Don't even repeat what we're saying, guys. Don't repeat anything that anybody's saying. Especially if you don't know that person. You're participating in spell casting. You're hexing people. I think that's why Bob is here right now. I don't think she wants this out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, never mind. I was going to say something, but I'm going to say it off camera because then it will really give it away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and out of all the aces, it's the ace of wands. So number one, it's, 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 um, she's using words to surrender people and put them actually in painful, um, temporary situations. Um, <clears throat> But it's going to reverse itself because I get two fives. It's temporary. It's not going to hold. And changes are being made around the earth for anyways right now. So 
it's going to, it's going to flip. Yeah. So more of the story guys do not, even if a YouTuber says something and then you say it back, you're hexing people. Stop it. Stop well, it. No, I mean, not every, how, how do we want to word this? Because okay, so I don't want to confuse anybody. The you know, or, and, the, and let's not, let's not promote. We're not promoting fear. We just want to make that very clear. We're not promoting no. fear. Take it's more back. or less. You just have to, um, if it look up what certain things mean, cer certain things symbolically like animals and, yeah. and, and numbers. Somebody sent me and, a Google of, of, they Googled this phrase and it's right there. It's an unkindness. Or some or uncompassion or something like it's right if there. If you're like, if you're addicted to certain, if you're addicted to watching something specific, if you have like an actual addiction to it, you're being hypnotized by somebody. Okay, don't don't even sit and binge watch our shows. I'm yeah. just telling you, don't don't binge watch me. Don't binge watch Bryce. An episode of Die Guys. You don't need to be watching Truth or After Truth or After Truth or After Truther. Because guess what? 90%, 90 percent of them are bad. 90 hypnotizes. Yeah. Yeah. Screen okay. time, you're you're putting you're putting things into your eyes are the gateway to your soul. If you're watching something, it's going into your soul. Does that make sense? Am I am I right on that? So, you know, um that actually brings anyway. the next gateways. Did I freaking read your mind? Yeah, because we're gonna talk about this. So Okay, go go for it. Bryce. Actually, before we get to the gateways, let me ask: Did uh, did Moses use these spell books to cast spells on the Egyptian people? All the curses, the plagues we read about in the Bible, and the parting of the Red Sea was that witchcraft for him to gain power? As the orb just went behind me. Oh, wow! This story is really effed up. Is this the beginning of the R family, basically? Or a bloodline family. Or maybe even the spawns of multiple bloodline families. <gasps> what? What? Y'all. Okay, ask that first. And then I'm going to, um, I think Mary Magdalene just told me something. I think that was the orb. And I think she just told me something. But do that first. And then I'm going to ask. Yeah. So he was attacking. Yeah. Full card, by the way, is. So it doesn't mean to fool somebody, essentially. What it really means is put something on a different path, a new journey, a new beginning. All right. Yeah. I think this is what Mary Magdalene just told me. There are two groups of 12 tribes. The 12 tribes a negative are, and a positive. Yes. Yeah. Are the 12, tri 12 tribes of Israel tribes, tribes <laughs> <laughs> that spawn from Jacob, who we know is dirty, are these the bloodline families that are ruling, that are satanically ruling our earth? Yeah, they, they, their, their motive was to reverse the prophecies of light. This, I'm hearing this, by the way. I'm not 100% getting it from the cards I'm hearing. Okay. They wanted us stuck in 3D. So, so I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing an automatic yes on that. I, I I didn't even need to pull cards on it. I was hearing it. But yeah. I don't know they, why I never thought of that before. Feeling that they're just, it was. There's this yucky energy around this whole damn thing. Yeah. It's I don't even want my cards attached to the this Bible account. is disgusting. Everything was reversed. It was stolen, reversed, manipulated, but it's not going to hold. I have this card. So the judgment card is coming. Um, what do you think revelation means? Yeah. So the 12 tribes, the galactic tribes, the, the, the 12, 12 tribes of the light, which are the Palladians, the Lyrans, those were the Egyptians. Yeah, they. there are 12 tribes of Israel that are not so good. Those are the families. Those are the bloodline families. Those so are the families. When you're venerating your Bible. You're venerating the fucking Luciferians. It says it right there. The Egyptians were the 12 tribes of galactic beings, the good beings. They were not. Okay. All right. 
I want to come back to that. I want to, I want to circle back to that. But first, let's talk about. Circle back. <laughs> we ain't no circle back, girl, but we are going to circle back to that in a minute. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So inside the sixth and seventh book of Moses, we talk about uh, the, the, sigil, the, the sigils. I have a hard time saying that word, which is a seal sign or symbol. All right. We have incantations. We have conjuring. Did you just say incantation? Yeah. Spells. I know. What's the that pastor lady on the video that we brought up? On well, she was doing there. incantations. Yeah, she even said that. Yeah, she yeah. said it out loud. Um, Bethel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not just Bethel, guys. It's not just Bethel. They're just the most obvious. Like it's all the churches. It's all of them. All right, conjuring and portals. They know how these books tell you how to open portals and tell you how to open gates. Okay. We're talking about wormholes. We're talking about moving the earth, a battle between the timelines, right? That's what we're telling you guys. Do not, do not believe any, any past life shit. Someone tells you, do not believe it. Do not believe it. It's not true. They're trying to get you to put your emotions into a false timeline so that we don't go to the proper timeline. Should I tell my story without you naming names? What story? With my feet. Yeah. Um, the story I was told and other people were told that was totally fake. Well, let me, let's bring up the whole past lives thing. Cause I, I do read cards on past lives stuff, but I don't give time periods. No, because I ha I asked direct questions like, was this person, because I've had people, I just don't want people getting confused. So like, I've had people ask me, do I, did I have a past life in Egypt? That's a big one I often get, because a lot of us light workers were actually very connected to Egypt. And I'll read cards on that, but <clears throat> I don't read cards on particular timelines. Like I don't, Say, oh, in the 1800s, did this person live, you know, I, I don't do, when I do my card readings, I don't do specific time periods. Yeah. I just ask directly, does this person have a connection from a past life to this place or this person? Yeah. Which but is, I just don't want people getting confused. I was given a past life by the big infiltrator that we know, Bob, um, because another friend had had a dream um about my feet and I, we got told a whopper a whopper of a story it's not true she made it up yeah she made that story up because she knows the real story the real story is way 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 more intense mm -hmm. and that was part of her <coughs> it's part of her spell casting yeah because she wants us on the negative timeline that's her plan she wants us on the negative timeline no, go ahead. Sorry. So just don't, don't just take it all with a grain of salt guys. Like guard your mind. It takes all of us collectively. They understand the collective power. If we're all thinking about this one particular timeline, that's negative. Guess what? We're going to go negative. Stop listening to past life readings from people you don't know, except for Stephanie. Cause she like, she doesn't give you a time period. She doesn't give you details. Right, you don't get deep. Plus, plus, for specifics, you really have to tap into the Akash, anyways. I can't, I don't tap into the Akash. I just get what I get in my cards and I ask specifically. Like, I don't, honestly, I don't prefer to even go dig into details about certain things. It doesn't anyways. really matter because no. the whole point is like, we're here now. And the, the feelings that you have that you learn from that will come up in this life that you can utilize. I mean, this coven that has been attacking me has been ta attacking me in every life. I learned that through this. They've been, go they've been going after me in every single life. And actually, I'll just go ahead and say it. Um, she said that my we were in a tunnel and my feet got chopped off because I tried to run. And then they had to all leave me behind that. And, and, and it never really felt really right with me. But then I see the truth. I was shown the truth through the actual records that um, it's not what happened. It's not what happened. I was tied up and RAPE'd by the coven in that life. And the other person who had the dream had to watch. And in that life, that person was my spouse. 
And it was during the priestesshood and priest of Isis. She knew. The person reading the cards knew the, tr the, the, the true story. And that was right before my natal chart was used. Right before. I almost literally was on death's doorstep. Stop listening to these people. Or if you listen to them, take it with a grain of salt. Don't hang on to it. All don't right. put anybody on a pedestal. Don't, no. Don't worship anybody. Don't put anybody on a pedestal. If anybody puts me on a pedestal, I will put you right in your place. I'm against that shit. Mm -mm. I'm just a human being. Yeah, I'm just a regular person. Bryce is just a person. And this is where we got ourselves into trouble is putting people on a pedestal. Do not worship another person. No. And if the person is watching right now that I haven't spoken to in five months who had that dream, that's what happened. That's why it upset you. You saw me get raped. To bleep that word out. Oh, maybe one time. That's what happened. That's the truth. And after it happened, the gang RAPE happened in that life. In that life, I died in your arms after it happened. And you had to watch everything. That's why it upset you. And I could have gone my whole life not knowing that not remembering that, not, but for some reason, because that, because this infiltrator who then brought her coven in to really go after me. So anyway, all right, let's get back to, let me ask this. Is this coven that has infiltrated YouTube, are they working specifically with the dark cult? Are they hired by the dark cult to do? I already know that answer. Yeah. I already know that answer. I've already pulled cards on it. I've already gotten clear audience answers on that one. That's a whopping big giant. Yes. Okay. I've known that for months, by the way. I have too. I, I just wanted yeah. to put that. So are they using, since we know that the Pope uses this book, we know that Constantine uses this book. We know that all these priests, these rabbis are using this book. Are these covens using the sixth and seventh book of Moses on top of the Necronomicon, the Grand Grimoire, the Lesser Key of Solomon? Is this one of their many recipe books, we'll say? Yeah. Yep. Because they're trying to, they're spellcasting setbacks. But again, this is temporary and painful setbacks. They can't destroy anything that God intended to have. The real and the God. angels are pissed too. <laughs> God, <laughs> so much sense. Lucifer and his minions just need to get their head out of their ass. I mean, you cannot ruin what God, in, the real God, intends. You, you cannot do it. If it's written in the stars, it's written in the stars. You cannot manipulate that shit. Plus, if you go to do that, the karma you're going to have to pay back anyway. You can't escape God, the mm -hmm. real God. You can't escape the, right, the actual God who created everything. You can't escape it. If you, if you, you're creating karma, good luck with that. Have fun. I don't yeah. feel sorry. Well, well we mm -hmm. know that these covens are actually involved in blood rituals and are actually involved in spirit cooking. And since I found out they are involved in spirit cooking, I've gone yeah. back and rewatched. They tell you, they're oh, telling yeah. you that they're doing this, but they wear certain clothes. They do certain, <clears throat> tap certain symbols. They're telling you they're spirit cookers. They're part of the, and they're also the groups that's telling you everyone's been arrested. Or this guy's not really dead. They're just, you know, they weren't bad. They were good. No, not, not everyone's been arrested, guys. It's still a war. They're fooling you. They're the ones talking about the movie. It's not a movie. They want you to rest on your laurels so that they can get their, their way. All right. Anyway, this is what, mm, okay. You're going down, fuckers. This life, this life, you're going down. It really sucks to be you. It really sucks to be you because you're going down. All right. Where are we going? Okay, so. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen in the editing process. I sent you this this morning, Stephanie. There is a portal that people took pictures of opening up above the White House. It's a red portal, and people are calling it the portal of hell. So since the sixth and seventh books of Moses also talk about good spirits. I didn't get it, Bryce. Of course you didn't. 
Hold okay. on, let me just double check. No, I got it. Never mind. Oh. Oh. What the fuck? So first of all, well, let's ask the cards. Can they explain that portal? Is it good? Is it bad? Is this why the coven's having a temper tantrum and a freak out right now? And I've got Bob the lizard pacing in my bedroom. <laughs> my dog's not even scared. That's how pathetic it is. It could be both. Definitely a portal. That's that's for sure. Definitely a portal. But it it could be. I have the Hierophant and I have the Temperance card. So we're watching a battle right now with the with the Magician card, and then I have the Ace of Wands. It's it could be either way. It depends on the conduit of that portal. So it's, it depends on who opens it. Will the cards tell us who opened it? Because it's open. Okay. Like as in when? Like recently. That's a reason. Was it the picture. same day that the Sphinxes thing happened? I don't know if it was the same day. But let's just ask who opened the portal. Because okay. Stephanie and I don't really know how to do magic, guys. Like, we're learning as we go with all of you. So <laughs> I don't know the details to ask. The furthest it can go is any kind of visualization. That's, that's the only thing I know how to do. It's, I, yeah. I don't want to cast spells. Like, that's I don't either. Not, I find that gross. I mean, we talk yeah. about spells. I think it's disgusting. That's so pathetic. Yeah, I was accused of it. And I'm just like, I'm laughing about it because it's like, I don't even know my head from my ass when it comes to this shit. <laughs> Come on. I know how to channel. That's as much as I can do. That I know how to do. Well, and they say that. So with the seventh, sixth and seventh book of Moses, like in order for you, if you were to buy this book and want to use it, if you have no training in magic whatsoever, you're not going to know how to use it. Like this yeah. is, you have to really understand what you're doing. And I kind of pick that up from the Grand Grimoire and the Lesser Key of Solomon and the Keys of Solomon too, and the Necronomicon. You kind of have to know what you're doing, which means you would have to have been an apprentice, which somebody asked in the comment section about all of the big characters of the Old Testament. Yeah, unfortunately, um, they're all the same family, guys. It's good news. Good off-worlders opened it up. Those are the light. Good. Yeah. That's why Bob's freaking out. And in my room right now. Ooh. Wheel of Fortune, people. Oh, we see the orb. You, I just had a orb, yeah. I think Mary like, wants yeah! to say something about Ma Ma Magdalene, Mags, just uh, hold on. We'll get, well, I'll, I'll have, at the end, I'm going to, okay, Mags, you're going to be the grand finale. Is that okay? All right, cool. All right, now let's Mags. talk about Mags. 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 <laughs> She's always with me. Um, okay. She, okay. Let me, let's talk about the Sphinx first. Okay, so I posted this on my Twitter, and I'm going to put pictures up. And at the beginning of the video, guys, if you skip the intro, I put a video of the Sphinx. The Sphinx closed its fucking eyes. That right. was wild. It's wild. And people were claiming, oh, it was Photoshopped. No, no, no. There's a video. I put it in the beginning. It wasn't Photoshopped. It's an amateur video, too. It comes from a regular person. Yeah. Like, Yo, like, like a tourist. Like, it wasn't even its eyes that closed. It's, it, too, it was, it's, its lips are pursed now. So somebody is saying this has to do with the timeline, a switching of a timeline. This comes back now. There's not a lot of information about this Egyptian prophecy. There was a prophecy, allegedly, in Egypt, from what I understand, that said when the Sphinx closed its eyes... Now, this is going to sound scary, but I actually take it to be good news. The creator of the earth was going to come back and destroy its, its people. I take that to be meaning Lucifer, because Lucifer is the god of the earth, not the creator of the earth, the god of the earth. And he's going, because there is no honor amongst thieves. He's going to be the one destroying his own people that served him. I don't know. That's just how I take it, because I don't, I'm not, I'm not all into this doomsday thing. I don't, you know. I split the deck. New journey, timeline shift. So the Sphinx is telling us the timeline. Oh, shift let me double check then. Let me just. The Sphinx closing its eyes about the good timeline shift. 
because the media there's a blackout on the media you would if i oh, were, yeah they turned off the camera looking at it didn't they if i were a journalist and the sphinx shut its damn eyes i'd be I like let me, let me need you now <laughs> like this is a story this is a story <laughs> oh dang excited <laughs> number one it's victory number two shut up bye 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 don't let the door hit you on the way out actually let it hit you yes we're all just walking each other home, except for those who practice black, mag black magic. You can fuck off. You're not walking home with us. Yeah, something's being put to rest. So this is good news. Yeah. Abs oh, absolutely. Come on. You can't make this up. This is a tower moment for the, for the, the, the bad guys. Bye-bye. So Magdalene keeps telling me that she wants people to know she's not Jewish. Okay. Uh, and she wants you to pull the cards because she says she wants people to know that she physically resembles me. Now, I want to assure you guys I'm not Magdalene. But she wants you to verify with the cards. Me, you mean she's got blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay. That's what I think she means. Because uh, I, in my research, too, I... I know she's she's Nordic. So what's the question that she had blonde hair and blue eyes? Does she look like me? I guess you can ask the cards, does she look like and meaning oh. my my features? She wants people to know that she was not Jewish. She said it's not a bad thing she wasn't Jewish. She just wants to get the story right. Well, her story was manipulated. Her story was real manipulated. I can't read the cards on this. It's giving too much away. Oh, sorry, Max. I know what it's giving away. Can you just give a simple, will give you a simple yes or no from the cards? Like, can you say yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, she looks like me. Blind, yeah, blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. I, I just, I got to be careful of what I'm putting out there. And I, I just can't, anybody who knows how to read cards would, is going to understand why. I, that I'm not, I'm not putting it out there. I know. I know why. Yeah. She wants you to ask the cards. Then the life that I lived with her, was that the life that I was, uh, since the story came out about the feet, was that the, the, the life that she wants you to get verified with the cards for the audience? Was that the life that I was brutally, um, RAPED by the coven in that life? I don't need the cards. I don't need the cards for I saw it. Yeah. That's the never. I need to talk to you after. I just saw. No, I just saw something. The emotions, I, yeah. I saw something. I that got a major download. So there was a life I lived with Magdalene. And that was the life where I was R-A-P-E-D'd. And it has to... See that orb? Can you ask the cards? Magdalene wants you to ask the cards. Magdalene, can you go... Okay, Matt, can you go channel to Stephanie? She wants you to pull on what the word Magdalene means. Okay. Maggie, go, go to Stephanie. Give her what you need to know. Maggie, what is Magdalene? I want to cry right now. Because whatever Magdalene means is why it was R-A-P-E-D in that life. I'm not getting a clear answer, Bryce. I'm going to use a different deck. So Maggie... Remember, we're still in human form. 
So go help stuff out there. She's telling me it's why I got RAPED and it's why I'm being heavily attacked in this life and it's why they're trying to kill me. And people, she's telling me people, for everybody needs to understand what the Magdalene is. It's not a location. It's not Magdala. Something to do with a woman's cycle. The womb. The, the, the uterus. And a cycle. She says it has to do with the divine feminine. Yeah. What do you think this means? It has and something on. to do with cycles and fertility and um and that uh these guys were trying to take something away. Which they've been, by the way, doing to many, many women, mm -hmm. not being able to conceive. Um, and this is also a woman who speaks their truth. So truth and fertility. Truth and cycles. I have the moon. The reason I say cycles is because I have the moon card here. The okay. moon card is not just something under the surface. The moon card could also be a woman's cycle. Her the monthly the cycle. Base, yeah. The cup, the chalice. Is a is the uterus, at the beginning, I told you that Yashua in that dream, you know, that Stephanie he put something in me before he told me he can't come. Did it have to do with the Magdalene? Did he put something in me? I'm not gonna read on that, Bryce. Okay, no, I'm getting no, I'm already going too far with this. Okay, so we'll stop it there. Yeah, I'm going too far, and I still have my reading at three, by the way. It's not far. Okay, one last. So, Magdalene, can you give us one last message? Is there to go to Stephanie? Give us one last message to close out this episode. And guys, this is also we're also going to be talking about this on Aquarius Rising Africa, and also on the Dark Outpost tomorrow. With tomorrow Tuesday, because it's aired on Monday. I know what you meant. Um, Eleven to one. What do you want me to pull? What Magdalene, whatever she wants to say to the audience. She wants to just, Okay. So go go tell Stephanie, Mag, Mags. I heard something. I just can't say it out loud. <laughs> you told me off camera. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. He wants everyone to know that they hijacked your story. I have seven of swords, which is they stole something. Well, is like her journey, her story, and then the Seven of Wands. So Seven of Swords and the Seven of Wands, they're both very chaotic cards. This is fighting. This is theft. This is her story. Um, I feel like she had to escape something. I need to pull a couple more cards. What else do you need to say, Maggie? While you're pulling cards, she told me, um, so for the person who had that dream about my feet, that if you're watching, I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, she wants you to know that you can call on her and she'll help you. And that she loves you. Magdalene loves you. And she'll come help you. I think that goes for anybody, though, to be honest with you guys. Grace, I can't go into this. What she wants to say? Yeah, I can't. Not on camera. I can't. I just can't. I, I cannot. This is okay. too much. She's telling me to tell me. She says, tell me off camera. I think she went. So who? Just. All right. 
All right. So guys, join us on Aquarius Rising Africa 10, where we're going to talk about this with Shanti Morne, and then we're going to talk about it with David Zubuk on the Dark Outpost. We're going to try to get Judy on that show as well. We're going to have Stephanie and Judy also give their opinions on this information, because I think this is like, this is just the beginning of us cracking into this goose egg of what the fuck. So um, use your Bibles as a resource of, of, of research right now, but nothing more, you guys, nothing more. So, all right. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here with us. Remember to subscribe to Stephanie. I will put her links down in the description box below. Bye, guys.